7% on the other. So now we're going to talk a little bit about facet injury. Facets are where one bone meets the other in our spine, and they've been very well documented to be uh, pain generators. So if you get a DMX from us, or someone says you have a facet injury, we want to know what facet is damaged and what is it actually doing, because there's multiple reasons that it could be hurt. So one, capsular ligament laxity can occur instantaneously as a single micro tra macro trauma, such as whiplash injury or other types of trauma. And it's, it can lead to ligament laxity, excessive motion of the facet joints, which then can relate in instability. The capsular ligaments are the main stabilizing structures of facet joints and the cervical spine and have been implicated a major source of chronic pain. We want to know if you have this. And you can also see how it can affect your spine. This was uh, published in Open, Open Orthopedic Journal back in 2014. So what are facet injuries? Well, where's patients I know they get facet injections, it numbs it, they're like, my pain went away. The question is, we still don't know what it is. Is it because it's lax? Is it because, here's a picture here, is it bleeding? You know, is the cartilage torn? Are there small little fractures? Or is the capsule torn? Sometimes we don't know. All of those can lead to facet pain. And if you numb it, it can say it went away. It still doesn't tell us what that pathology is. We want to find out what that is. And if you look, many of you watching may see that they have this pain pattern. It's really diffuse. It kind of goes into the shoulder blades. You can't pinpoint it like someone who has shooting pain on the arm and you could trace it with a pencil. This is very diffuse and overlapping. So here's a nice video we did where we show um, an area above that the nerve root is healthy. And what we found in our DMX paper is that when you move in certain positions, the facet joint can jam into um, the vertebra above, narrowing the hole where the nerve root comes out. And here's what that looks like. We just made a nice little uh, cartoon illustration, so to speak, to show how one area has space, not hitting the nerve root, the other one doesn't have space and gets smashed. So now let's say we diagnose facet injury on your digital motion x-ray in our office. What does that mean, short and long term? Well, unfortunately, the facet capsular ligament is innervated by proprioceptive and nociceptive pain and where your body is in space um, and how you move um, nerves with projections largely the same spinal level as the facet form um, from which they originate. Increased peripheral neuronal input to the spinal cord can be sufficient to produce long-lasting central sensitization. That fibromyalgia, central sensitization you hurt because the facet joint got damaged, it can lead to increased pain sensitivity due to the noxious stimuli and the chemicals going into the nerve root and the cord. And that neuronal hyperexcitability in the dorsal horn, that's of the spinal cord, they showed developed within one day after a mechanical facet joint injury. So we know that patients that get hurt, not only does their neck hurt, your whole body can get sensitized because those noxious chemicals can be going into uh, and onto the nerve root and even your spinal cord. So how do we see facets on DMX? Well, here's another video where we see the facet joint starting to gap open. And we look for these things. I look for these things. I know what I'm looking for because we're one of the authors. We can determine it, analyze it, measure it. Here's another image of a DMX tear on the DMX that we're looking for, and you'll see where the arrow is. There's a nice, it opens way up. It shouldn't open that far, and then when it comes down, it minimizes into that hole. So how do we know the facet is really injured? We do a DMX, so I'm like, hey, there's facet gap in here, and someone's like, I don't think that is. Let me show you the likelihood of, of injury. In our paper here, as you can see, we looked at what's called facet gapping on the A to P, front to back, on the oblique, and we also looked at symmetrical movement. And what we found was a significant difference. At C5, C6, at one level, 37% of the, almost 38% of the injured population had this. We never saw it in the asymptomatic group. It did not exist. At um, facet gapping oblique, we found 42% um, in the injured group and only about 2.5% in the non-injured group. We know what areas are more likely than not to be a problem and more likely than not to be injured. The likelihood of the patient with an abnormal C4, C5 facet gapping finding would be symptomatic was 44.9 times greater than a patient with a normal C4 to C5 facet gapping finding. We published that in our paper.
So if we see that, we know that you're 44.9 times more likely to be injured. So if you hear an insurance company, you know, in a car crash or a, or a doc say, I don't think that's a problem, it doesn't matter what they think. We're following what the science shows and our paper shows that so we can help you get the care that you need so you can stop living in pain. Here's from table four, this is what we showed. Model three down here shows that if you have two or more of these findings, you have an 88% likelihood of being injured and three or more, you're at 92% likelihood to be injured. It doesn't matter whether you, you're, you, that may not be an injury. Actually, it most likely is. And we published that. That's what our data showed. 